just about fifty years ago in october of nineteen fifty two a local television show went on the air in philadelphia on august the fifth nineteen fifty seven as i mentioned at the beginning of the program it had become dick clark's american bandstand and it made its national debut on the abc television network along with the music stars one of the attractions of the show was to watch the dancing and one of the dancers on and off for several years was my next guest, Ed Kelly. Ed, welcome to the program. Thank you. Pleasure there to be here. There you are then. Is that you looking over your shoulder? That's me. That's inside, right outside the studio. And, and, am I allowed to say you had more hair then? Well, yeah, everybody says that. Yes, <laughs> everybody certainly. says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you get on the show? Now, did you start on it before it was on ABC when it was just a local show? No, I used to watch Ben Stan. I had my favorites on the show. Yeah. Uh, I started the spring of 59. Uh, uh -huh. the front, the, some of the front runners uh, in 1957 when Dick first took it, you know, uh, nationwide was Bob and Justine, yeah. Kenny and Arlene. They were the very two popular couples. And I started the spring of 59, and I was on until 1961. And uh, I became popular with a girl by the name of Kathleen Gibson. Her nickname was Bunny. And we were like the couple of... And there you are. There we are. That's, that's outside the, the studio, 46th Street Market. Yeah, in Philadelphia. In Philly. Now, the show, I like. as I said, it had been a local show for several years. It was done by somebody else before Dick took it over. Uh, Bob Horn was the host. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after Dick took it over, did it get more popular? Is that what gave ABC the idea of putting it on nationwide? It actually started in a, in a radio studio, even before Bob Horn was the original yeah. host. And uh, kids used to go to the radio station in Philadelphia, and they would dance like outside the radio studio and someone had the idea I think the gentleman's I think they were named Grady and Hurst yeah. and someone had the idea let's put this on television and that's when it when they developed the TV show and even when it was aired locally uh, the kids on the show at that time did receive fan mail also now when you grew up in Philly yes Mm -hmm. Listening to the Gita with the heater? Yeah, the boss with the hot sauce, <laughs> yeah, Jerry Blavitt. Yeah, Jerry Blavitt. Yeah, yeah, he He's still, still does. There. Yeah, he still does his his weekend gigs yeah. in, in Margate, I think. Yeah, Margate. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it's kind of like cousin Brucey here in New York. You know, they they they, they just go on and on, on and on and forever. On. And yeah. thank goodness. And he was a dancer. You knew that, did you? Yeah, really? I yeah. Know he started too, yeah. out. I know Jerry. Yeah. As, okay, is a regular. He had a little bit of a trouble during one of the payola scandals yeah, and blah yeah. blah blah, and that blew away. But he's he's a hell of a DJ. Always was. Yeah, fast talker. Oh, <laughs> you can't beat them. No, can't now, beat them. How, did, how did you get on the show? And what, did they have auditions or did you just no, go no, on? No, no, There was just certain kids from Philadelphia, whatever attracted us to the show, I, I just don't know what it yep. was, probably the music and wanting to dance. And we would go there after school. And uh, how you became like a quota regular was uh, someone would uh, write a letter to Dick Clark, ask about, let's say, uh, the girl with the blonde hair with the poodle skirt or yep. uh, the tall guy with the pompadour, yeah, which whatever is it happened to be, yeah. whatever, wherever the pompadour went. Uh, and then Dick, then Dick would interview you on the show. And once the public knew who you were, they would start, you know, receiving fan yeah. mail. And we, you know, all the regulars received mail. I think now, Dick, at that point, were you invited back or did you just, was it still catch No, catch, I, just, catch? I just went every day. And because I was tall, and not yeah. many of the girls were tall at that time, Arlene Sullivan, who was one of the originators and forerunners, front runners, I was saying, in like 1957, had pulled me out of the bleachers because the first couple times I went to bandstand I was like sort of nervous dancing yeah. on TV I just watched I was too petrified to dance so she said come on well my guess is that's why they they started to invite back people that got a little attention a little uh, and, and a little fan mail was that they knew you'd get up and dance I mean the last thing they needed was a studio full of kids sitting on their hands while Dick Clark is being the MC and then playing the right and that's or right. having the stars lip sync yeah it was the Probably the traumatic part was like getting a person out of the stands to dance. And once yeah. you danced and got to know people, it's like everything else. You know, everything else was easy after that. Did it kind of become like a party that you went to every afternoon? Yeah, we had a good time. Don't forget, we were on the air five days a week. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot, of, a lot of TV time to be on. And people would tune in as they would like a soap opera and say, you know, well, why isn't Eddie dancing with Bunny? And ask questions like Did that. Did visions of sugar plum fairies dance in your head and make you think, well, gee, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a TV star? I mean, no, that kind of attention no, that to never, a young kid never hit you? <laughs> Any of the others? I think it's Because you I kind of stayed in the business. You stayed in the music business yeah, and, I worked and, and are the, still in it, yeah. No, I, I was in the music business for about 10 years yeah. when I first came to New York, and I'm actually uh, a records manager for a law firm, and I've been in the legal oh, okay. profession for well, still close to 30 years. Still records. <laughs> yeah, still Paper, records. though. Yeah. How Paper boring, records. though. Yeah, we're right. Boring. But uh, were any of the kids uh, 
starstruck by, by the, the attention they got? Uh, I have to admit, uh, even though we weren't professional dancers yeah. and we weren't talented, to have fan clubs and to be in all the magazines yeah. and then all of a sudden stop, yeah, it, there, there was a certain period yeah. of adjustment. Yeah. yeah. It can bend your head a little it bit. Did. We'll, we'll it take did. a little break and we'll be back with this bent guy in just a moment. <laughs> They saw some of the uh, stuff that surrounded these kids who used to go to the studio to dance on uh, American Bandstand in the early years, from uh, the late 50s to the early 60s. One of those kids was Ed Kelly. And uh, did you, uh, you get thrown out of school because you went there, or you had to be changed? You... Yeah, for some reason, the, uh, in Catholic high school, I was a freshman. And uh, when they found out that I was on Bandstand, um, they called me into the principal's office and said, you know, if you want to continue to dance on Bandstand, uh, you're not able to attend the high school any longer. And my dad at that time thought, you know, who are they to tell me? Music, well, right? it was, it yeah, rock and thing, roll yeah. was a bad thing, yeah. you know, and dancing on television and just wasn't acceptable. And um, my dad decided that who were they, who was, you know, who are the Catholic yeah. Church to tell me what to do? My father was a cop? Policeman. Yeah. Yep, cop. Cop, yeah. Son of a cop. And uh, I attended a business school. Business school. So you could continue to be on And I can, that's right. That's right. Now, the, oh, there you have uh, 16 magazine, and uh, on the cover are the, are the bandstand, uh, the kids that danced on bandstand. No, right? actually, that's that's Brenda Lee and myself on the left. Yeah. And that's some of the uh, Tim Annette Funicello. Yeah. And the Everly Brothers, Connie Francis. So you're in with some big Jimmy stars. And Jimmy Clayton, there. big stars. Yeah. So Brenda Lee was booked as the little girl with the big voice. And she yeah, certainly, and she. Certainly and did. she and here's a, now a, a viewer made this, started this scrapbook. That's correct. And in it are a lot of pictures. They're going to be a little difficult for you to see at home, but some of them are actual shots take, of, of the show itself. Uh, Dick Clark is in one or two of them. It's very difficult to make them out. But that's what the show looked like. That's when television uh, came in a little mm -hmm. box in black and white. And these two girls started the streak? Yeah. Streaking their hair? The streaking the hair. And then there you go uh, with some of the mm -hmm. other shots that were taken. Actually. These are pictures of the television screen while the show was, and there's Dick Clark in the, uh, the lower part it? of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and a viewer started this scrapbook for you? That's correct. And then your mom continued My it, My mom said? continued yeah. it. Mm -hmm. How did you, now in 1961 it's over, how'd you feel? I mean, what happened? Did you just what decide could I do? to stop I, or I the show decided, moved on? No, no, what? no. What happened hmm. was um, I went to the studio one day along with some of the other kids, and uh, because I didn't attend accredited high school, uh, I was no longer able to attend the show, and it, it, it ended that abruptly. So you got boxed. I mean, I got, the, the, I, the accredited I got high school boxed. wouldn't let you go there, and the school that your folks put you in wasn't accredited, so... That's correct. So well, long, at 18, <laughs> Well, at 18, I would have left the show anyway in August, but this was April of 61. Yeah. I and a few of the other kids were uh, told, you know, couldn't come in. That what was, was the it. age limit, huh? 18. 18. 18 yeah. What was the young? The 14 to 18, but I know some people that went to the show when they were 12. Yeah. Now, did any romances develop among the boys and girls who were regulars? Uh, very few. Very few. Over the, the years married. that you were on it, you said about three or four years as a regular? I was on about two and a half to three Three times, years, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. How many regulars were there? I mean, was it an ever changing well, group? Uh, roughly, there were probably about 25 to 30. When yeah. Dick has his specials, his anniversary yeah. specials, it's usually the same group, Bob and Justine, Kenny Arlene, Carol, Franny, Eddie and Bunny, Carmen and Yvette. I think that's about, that's yeah. the basic eight or ten that he usually chooses to have on the show. Now, is there going to be uh, another one? When is the next uh, anniversary special? Well, they, well, celebra the they celebrate it. ABC the celebrates both, right? It depends yeah. what ABC, ABC decides what to celebrate. We'll have to find out more about when that's going to come up next time. Thank you for coming in, Ed Kelly. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And